beautiful people. My name is Abriel, your resident herbalist, and welcome back to Beauty Herbs and Tea. We bring the beauty and the fun to herbs and holistic health. So in today's video, we're actually going to talk about one of the number one questions that I get in my DMs all the time, okay? And that is, how do you become an herbalist? What do you have to do to become an herbalist? What schools do you go to? What programs do you have to enroll in? What do you have to do to become certified? And believe it or not, the answer to your question is not gonna be what it seems, but let's go ahead and just get into it, okay? I'm going to talk about the top three ways to become an herbalist. So here in the United States, believe it or not, herbalism is not regulated. That means that anybody can say they're an herbalist. There is nobody checking for you. If you call yourself a clinical herbalist, again, nobody's gonna check you. There is no federal governing body to give you a certification in herbalism. However, there is a peer review group that some people hold in a high esteem in the herbalism community called the American Herbalist Guild. Now, membership to this group is optional, okay? But some people in the herbalism field here in America feel like in order to be considered a real herbalist, you have to be a part of this group or in order to be considered a respected herbalist, you have to get membership to this group group. This group, the American Herbalist Guild, they do have a certain level of requirements to be able to gain membership into the guild and you have to have a certain level of clinical hours. Clinical hours means you have to be working directly with clients. So you have to have that one-on-one -on -one support and you also have to go through an actual herbal program. But again, it is completely optional and it's a personal decision. What do you have to do to actually call yourself an herbalist ethically? So there are are three ways that people actually use to become herbalists and I'm gonna break them down so the first way that you can become an herbalist is to go through some form of herbal training now a lot of schools may offer a herbalism certificate program and typically these can be anywhere from six months to a year that's the typical time frame for an herbalism certificate program some schools may offer an associate's degree a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in an herbal related field so in botany phytochemistry natural medicine things like that but again you don't need to have a master's or a bachelor's degree or go through an associate program typically one of these it depending on your background and depending on the level of commitment typically most people just go through the six month or the year herbalism program and then they also have some form of apprenticeship so they have hands-on experience now if you want to go this route and go through a certificated program you need to make sure your program is teaching you everything okay there are some programs promising you a master herbalist certificate in a month that's a lie okay that is a lie that is a scam there's no way that you can become a master herbalist and get the experience needed to be able to call yourself that in a month. So just be wary of some of the programs that are out there. Most programs will say they'll offer an herbalism certificate. And you want to make sure your herbal program has certain requirements. So in my mind, a good herbal program will teach you your Materia Medica and just a little herbalism vocabulary. Materia Medica is just your knowledge and the study of herbs and their compounds and what they do. So knowing about the herbs. So you want a program that teaches you the Materia Medica of an herb or a plant. What is the plant name? What is the energetics? Energetics is going to be the actions of the herb. What does the herb feel like? What does it do internally? What is the taste? That's what energetics means. But you want a program to teach you that. The name, the botanical names, the common names, the origin. You want to know everything about these herbs as well as the contraindications and the uses, the precautions. So Materia Medica is important. 
Number two, you wanna learn herbal formulations. How do you take these herbs and use it in medicine? There's so many different ways to prepare herbal medicine. You can do it using tinctures, you can do it using capsules, tea form, you can eat it, you can use it as salves, skin products. There's a lot of different formulation ways and you wanna make sure your herbal program goes over all of the formulation techniques so that you're not just learning how to make a tincture because some people may not you know like tinctures i'm a tea girl myself <laughs> i love me some tea and i take my herbal medicine in tea because it's a whole vibe okay it's a whole vibe <laughs> so yes make sure your herbal program covers materia medica herbal formulations and this next one is extremely important okay you want to make sure that your herbal program goes over anatomy okay and the reason why is because herbs first of all all herbs are not created equal all herbs are not safe to take herbs can have certain interactions in the body they can have certain interactions with certain disorders and diseases and structures in your body they can cause side effects to certain organs in your body so you want to know what that is you want to be able to pinpoint the liver and the kidney if you have somebody that is presenting with digestive digestive issues or stomach discomfort, you want to know what organs that is affecting. So I believe anatomy, the connection to anatomy and herbs is extremely important because honestly, you can kill somebody, okay? <laughs> and I'm not even trying to be funny, but there are herbs that are toxic. So herbs are medicine. Just like medicine can cause harm, some herbs can as well. So to be a well-rounded herbalist, you need to have an herbal program that has an anatomy portion in it. And if not, you need to go ahead and enroll in an anatomy, in a basic anatomy program. So the next thing that your program should have would be, in my personal opinion, I think a program should also have a nutrition piece. Just because as herbalists, nine times out of 10 when we see a client, we're not just giving herbal recommendations. You are also giving nutrition recommendations. If you have a client that presents with something called leaky gut, which is a digestive issue, you're going to recommend herbs, but you also have to recommend dietary changes. You might have to tell them, hey, you, you know, can't eat gluten, you can't eat dairy, you want to eat things that are better for your gut mucosa if you don't know anything about nutrition science then it's going to be hard to make those recommendations so I actually ended up going through a nutrition program because I found myself in so many of my consultations giving out nutrition advice but my personal opinion those would be the top four things that I would look for in an herbalism program now let's get on to number two the second way that you can use to become an herbalist is to find a mentor. Find somebody in an herbal space that is wiser, has more knowledge than you, that you can learn from them. And that's actually the way that a lot of people in the past became herbalists. They got an apprenticeship, they got a mentor, and they study under them, and they learned everything their herbal teacher had to teach them, pretty much. And the only issue with that piece is it is extremely extremely hard to find a mentor in herbal spaces it just is i have no idea why <laughs> especially if you get into indigenous herbalism and you want to look for a mentor in the indigenous space it is even harder to find a mentor if you do find a mentor nine times out of ten you're going to have to pay they want you to pay thousands of dollars for their program which honestly is understandable because who's time is free but a lot of the times you just have questions and you may need guidance and you just honestly may not have the money to pay three thousand dollars four thousand six thousand dollars for an apprenticeship or for a mentorship when back in the day it was free so again that 
this method is one of the more harder ways to become an herbalist but if you have somebody in your family if grandma auntie anybody in your family if they know about herbs if they have used herbs for years ask some questions talk to them if you have friends herbal friends like me <laughs> if you have some herbal friends ask them questions like literally get all the knowledge you can because that is a way that you can become an herbalist. So let's go on to the third way that you can become an herbalist. And the third way is actually the method that I end up starting off with, and that is self-study. So the way you go the self-study route is literally you buy as many herbalism books as you can and you just soak up all the knowledge that you can you read those books daily well i'm gonna tell y'all how i did it so that's exactly how i did it actually <laughs> i bought every single herbal book that i could i don't recommend that you go broke <laughs> but i whenever i got my hands on an herbal book i dove into that herbal book i was highlighting taking notes i actually made a spreadsheet for my materia medica for my herbs and in that i included the botanical name the common name the energetics the taste the uses the properties and the precautions and i also added in their clinical articles or clinical research trials because i wanted to know everything about this herb and that honestly i still refer back to that spreadsheet to this day that spreadsheet is amazing <laughs> it has came in handy especially when i have clients who may be on some medication and so I will put any contraindications in that spreadsheet so if they're you know on birth control and they're taking this herb and I want to know if it interacts with that herb I'll just go to that spreadsheet another way that I used to learn about my herbs was I made flashcards <laughs> so that's another way to that's another way that you can use to memorize your herbs get a flash card write the common name of the herb on the front and on the back write the latin name write the energetics properties precautions all that jazz <laughs> write all of that on the back and go over it every day study those herbs I have a little parch, y'all. Oh, I need some water. <laughs> but go over that every day. Study those herbs every day until it becomes second knowledge. So that's what I did every single day. I studied herbalism on my own independently for almost 10 years, honestly. But it was more so of a hobby for me because I love the information. So I would come home. I would find a herb. I would write about it. I would buy the herb. And I would try it out on myself. And that is how I learned how these herbs work. Now, I do not recommend you going out and buying every single herb out there because you will go broke. <laughs> Herbs are expensive. I did that, okay? I was speaking from experience. I did that. Do not do that. But it is important that you go and you get herbs that have a personal connection to you and your lifestyle and you try those herbs out because you are your first client. How are you going to know how these herbs interact with the body if you don't try them out for yourself? How are you going to know how these herbs taste if you don't try them out for yourself, okay? So it is important that you choose herbs herbs that again you have a personal connection to so let's just say do you suffer from PMS cramps do you suffer from knee pain arthritis pain do you suffer from headaches you want to get herbs that are good for those things and try them out for yourself be your own clinical research subject and see how well these herbs work because you can offer testimony based off of yourself that is pretty much it y'all those are the three ways you can use to become a herbalist now on top of my 10 years of self-study I also went through five herbalism programs <laughs> yes five and that's because again I wanted to learn the anatomy piece the nutrition piece I wanted to be a well-rounded herbalist now you don't have to go through five programs y'all I'm just extra <laughs> I am extra I am a lover of knowledge and I just like all information and I'm a nerd too y'all I'm so nerdy I love all things anatomy and the brain I also also went through an indigenous a BIPOC herbalism program because I wanted to learn about herbs that were important and significant to my heritage so again that's what I did to become an herbalist these are the steps that you can take to become an herbalist this is the third video in my herbalism and business series
activities. So for anyone that, again, wants to become an herbalist and because they want to sell herbal products or you just want to learn more about herbs because you want to sell herbal products, these things in this video will definitely help you out, okay? So I hope y'all are loving these videos. <laughs> I hope y'all are loving these herbalism and business videos. I plan on doing a whole lot more. As I mentioned before, I got vendor lists, book lists, school lists. I got a lot, y'all. And I am also coming out with a herbalism and business course. Yes. <laughs> I am launching soon an herbal business assistant course. I will help you launch your herbalism business. So stay tuned for that. I will have a lot more information on that. I want to share with y'all everything that I did to get my business from zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> I went from making zero dollars to my first few weeks, my first month to my second month hitting eight thousand dollars to my third and fourth month hitting over twenty thousand dollars. So I want to tell y'all my secrets. I want to tell y'all every step that I took because believe it or not in this field it's not a lot of information on how to become an herbalist. A lot of people have questions about licensing, business structures, trademark, LLCs, so proprietorships, insurance, insurance, schools, things like that. But in the meantime, continue to watch these videos. I still plan on giving a lot of info, dropping a lot of gems in these videos. And I also will be posting videos on, of course, herbs, on tea recipes, on herbal medicine. So this channel is well-rounded. We're gonna have all types of herbal information on this channel. But that is it, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the video, it is so important. It it means the world to me. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. <laughs> Cue music. <laughs> but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay blessed. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Bye.